Hey everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer. And today we have a pretty cool bike rack. This is the Kuat Piston Pro X 3 bike platform rack. So this is gonna be a great way to get the bikes of your friends, your family, all loaded up, ready to hit the trail. Now, let's get those bikes on there. One of the quickest setups of three bikes onto a rack that I've seen here at eTrailer. But before we hit the road, let's talk about the details. So this looks good, but if you look closer, you'll realize that we had to get a little bit creative depending on the different types of bikes you have for those larger frames and especially those mountain bikes, you will have to do some extra things. So this has a 53 inch wheelbase and if you have a mountain bike with a dropper post, you may have to lower that seat down in order to get it to fit. Or you can try sliding your bike back a little bit, which is what we did here. So I need to bring this bike back a bit more so that we can clear the handlebars on the other bike, but listen to the click. Right there. That's the first click to ratchet it down. So you can only move your bike this far out to get it to click. A feature I do like though is the selective loading and unloading feature. That is if you need to get this middle bike. Usually for other racks, you'd have to take the last bike out, then you can go towards the middle of the bike. Here, you can just open up one tray, one, bring that all the way down, and go to the other side. Two, bring it all the way down. You're still gonna have to maneuver around those handlebars and those pedals and those gears, but still, it's a nice little extra option for picking the bike you wanna get off and being able to take it off. Now, I don't recommend this for heavy bikes because it can get a little tricky for the larger ones. Now, compared to your two bike Piston Pro X, which had a 67 pound weight capacity, the three bike version has a 50 pound weight capacity per bike, which means if you have your extra heavy electric bikes, that's something to keep in mind. But also a good rule of thumb is have the heaviest bike closest to the vehicle and then have your smaller and lighter bikes on the outside. Now that weight capacity is also important because of how much weight will be on your rack when you tilt the rack away. So for that tilt away feature, you have two options. One is to try to hit the lever with your foot, unless you have short feet like me, that's not gonna happen. The other is just to pull the lever. So reach in through the bikes, pull that lever, and let the rack drop down. So that's gonna be a lot of weight coming down and it is gonna tilt pretty deep, but even here on our Tesla, it doesn't hit the ground. Now you wanna tilt your bike rack away with the bikes on if you wanna open your hatch or your trunk or lower your tailgate for your trucks. And this gives you all that space to grab your bags, your backpacks, or even change out your shoes after or before your ride. So with having multiple bikes on there, you also have a longer rack. So measuring from the center of your hitch pin hole to the end of the rack or for this point, that's gonna be 41 inches. So driving around, you can see the bikes move. We're gonna go through the test course just so I can show you the up and down movement. So this is alternating speed bumps and everything's holding together. There's a little bit of side to side movement, but you can see that it's holding onto the front and the rear wheels. And while things are shaking, it's all shaking together. And that's very important because you want a little bit of flex, but not too much. With your three bike version, you're gonna have two cables and two spots to lock your bike. So you could try to use one cable for all three bikes or utilize both of them. So a single cable is gonna be about nine feet long and that will help you figure out if you can run it through your bikes. I try to get it through the front wheel as well as through the frame and if I can through the rear wheel if possible but that will change depending on you know the size of your bikes and how they're built. So for example here I try to run it through the front wheels as well as the frames of all of our bikes but having to go through the end and then into the lock it's not going to make it. So we're just gonna have to reorganize. But once you figure it out how to wrap the cable around your bikes, just pop that into that lock. It snaps into place. 
I don't recommend driving around with your cable lock on. That's just because there's movement and then there's rubbing against your bikes. But it's a great option for security when you're parked at a gas station or overnight. And when you're ready to go again, just use your keys, put that into the lock core, turn, and it'll pop the cable lock out. And then you can remove it from your bikes and you're ready to drive. Another quick look at some features is this is a hydro pneumatic piston. Press that and you can see the Kashima coating on that piston. So on your three bike version, the outside tray is going to have the quick adjustments for your different wheel sizes. You even have the little numbers here. So whether you have your 29 inch tires, you got your 27.5, 26, all the way down to 20, as well as your hole here that says fender kit only. And that means no matter what tire size you have, you can make those super quick adjustments compared to some other racks like the Rocky Mount Skyd Rail that requires two tools, two wrenches to adjust. And that thing about the fender kit means even if your bike has fenders, you'll still be able to secure that front and rear wheel. The grooves on your wheel mount are the same as the grooves on your tray. So whether you have your thin road bike tires or your wider mountain bike tires or your fat tires, this can fit around them. In fact, the maximum tire width is going to be up to five inches. Now, even without the bikes, it's still a heavy rack. In fact, this is 86 pounds, just the rack weight. Also, it comes kind of close to our car. So let's take some measurements to see if it'll fit yours. These mounts are always going to stick up just a little bit past those trays. You'll see a little bit of flex inwards, but zero flex outwards. So that means measuring from the closest point of our bike rack to the center of the hitch pinhole, that will be about seven inches of clearance that you're going to need. So if your hitch is close or recessed, to your car or if your bumper sticks out a little bit further that's something to take measurements for keep that unlocked and you can pop out your magnetized tool and this is what's used to secure your bike rack to your hitch receiver so just rotate that easy you use lever there to do so and that means it extends that cam inside of your hitch receiver making that all snug also while we're here you can see that hitch pin which is connected to a lock to keep your bike rack secure. Living with this bike rack behind your car, this is gonna add 31 inches from the bottom of your hitch receiver lip to the top of the rack. So this may cover the rear window of your car and for the length, it may even cover the taillights. But one important thing that everyone asks about is, will it cover my backup camera? So here in reverse, you can see on our backup camera that the bike rack is very visible, but you'll also be able to see a little bit past it, the view behind it. On some vehicles, this may trigger your backup alarm, like it does there. And also, if that's a major issue for you, you may want to consider just driving with this in the down position. Now there are some features that make this easier for you to use. One is gonna be that step down lever. If you're holding your bike with one hand, you could just step on this and hold the rack with the other and drop this down. Another thing is if it does cover your taillights, there's a solution for that. So this includes a wiring harness that can connect to the wiring on your vehicle. Now you may see some reviews out there that have a magnetic mount for their harness. Well, that's going to be the older design for the Kuat Piston Pro X. The newer design is going to have a non-magnetic method of connecting both the trays as well as the bike rack to your vehicle. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So first thing, make sure you have a four-way flat on your car. Your wiring harness will have two pieces. One is going to be the one you connect to the bike rack if you need a little bit of an extension. If you are not planning on using any wiring, you then just leave this piece off. The next one goes over to your vehicle side. So this requires a four-way wiring or four-way flat, as some people call it. If you happen to have seven pole wiring, you can go ahead and get an adapter here at e-trailer. If you already have four-way, then you can plug it straight away. Your wiring will have two magnets on them, and that's so that you can just attach it anywhere you want on the bike rack since it is metal and just clean up the wires behind your car. 
With that all connected, you're now able to have tail lights show up on your bike rack as if they were on your vehicle. So notice how that lights up. Even the add-on has the lights turn on just like the base did. So here we have our different lights. I'm currently stepping on the brakes and you can see that reflected on the bike rack. We also have our left turn signal, our right turn signal, and we have our hazards on as well. So you still might see the older version of the Kuat Piston Pro X, especially out on the road. And the bike rack itself is gonna be the exact same, same construction, same design, same material. It's really just the wiring that is going to be different in this redesign. And I personally like the new style of wiring because for the previous magnetic mounts, if you didn't install the trays properly, that light connection would not connect. But having actual wires and plugs that you plug into makes for a more secure fit, as well as makes you feel better that you did do everything correctly before you start driving with your bikes. So with all of that, let's get back to the demo. So other than the very practical features, this is also a great looking bike rack. You have that very sleek look that Kua is known for. You have the Kashima coated pistons. Also, there's zero plastic on this rack. In fact, it's a good type of metal that this rack is made of. Holding and carrying this rack, it's not painful versus touching this car that can get hot pretty quick. So if you need to install this or tilt this down during a really hot day, that's nice. So my personal thoughts about the Kuat Piston Pro X is there's some things I really like about it and there's three things that you also have to consider. So the things I really like is you take together all of those premium features, you make a solid and good looking rack with the integrated taillights, the locks, that tilt away feature, even that tool free tool, all of that is awesome. The downside to it though is you may have to work a little bit more to get it to work right for you. One is going to be most people don't have that four-way wiring on their normal vehicles and you may have to get that one added. You can find them at eTrailer.com by the way. Also, please make sure you have a two inch hitch receiver that has enough weight capacity for those heavy bikes. And finally, for those larger bikes, you're gonna have to figure out the best way to get them to fit together, ideally without bringing your dropper posts down or making too many big adjustments. But other than that, solid rack works great and looks great. And that right there was a look at the Kuat Piston Pro X3 bike platform rack here at eTrailer.com. My name is Evangeline and I hope you enjoyed the journey.